something like that. Um, offensive line, important traits. Uh, you know, I, I like having guys that are tough as heck, and it, it, it doesn't mean that you fight everybody you see, but it develops through school, through the weight room, jobs, and failure. And it's a show me, don't tell me, uh, you know, entire um, uh, philosophy. Uh, okay. And, and the biggest thing is just getting kids that it matters. Okay. And I'm telling you, if, if you pick a kid that believes in this and believes in things are, that matter um, over anything else, you're going to get a good, talented group here. And I, I'm not kidding you. This picture was taken when we went to Arkansas and the game is still going on. I'm standing right over here uh, about to go nuts on these guys for, uh, you know, being goofballs here. But, uh, you know, that's that's what you got out of this group was uh, a bunch of dudes that were overachievers and competitive, and it led to a great season. Um, and this is just reaffirming all the stuff that we went over uh, and, you know, everything like that because it all leads into this, okay? And I, I call all this stuff here the BS um, because it is, you know, like the, the sink your butt and it's, it's old school and it's a good, it, it's a good teaching point, but this is a far better. All right. Um, and understanding the body that we just spent the whole time over, um, you know, going through to make sure that we're, we're going and the testing, the good squat versus the bad squat, the good deadlift versus the bad deadlift and all that stuff. Okay. So we went through a loaded stance before, okay? Now we're gonna get into our other stances and the other things that we do out of them, okay? So like I said, the loaded stance is what we saw Brian Urlacher do. This is your two point stance. And once you teach your kids a loaded stance, their hands loaded, everything ready to go, you can move into uh, a two point. And I would always start with you have your loaded stance to your two point stance to your three point stance. And then you can work on whatever else, you know, you, you have a tackle two point stance. You've got some other things that you, you know, a couple of other, but start with the two point because here's why right here. I told you guys, it all starts with your feet. Okay. If you have a guy that has his feet, you know, his heels up in the air or his lower half isn't, good eliminate the focal point of the hand being in the dirt for the kid give him two points to put in the ground so he can entirely work on his feet you can see kyle long here um you know toes to hips to make that triangle and his whole body is a triangle as we look at it here okay and another aiming point teaching point is i want my knees to be in line with my shoulders to my hips here all right and, and dropping them because what you're going to have after a while here is once we start getting that triangle and kids dropping back you're going to tell them to arch the back what happens with the back it rises up okay but i want him to be loaded and comfortable and it's not to be completely you know a rack like that where he does have some wiggle room um to stay in line with his his chest and everything behind his toes so that's what I, you know we want to work on um, with our two point stance. Uh, uh, you know, notice the, the forearm on the thigh board. That's just the one point I want to have him be. I don't, you know, I'm not really stressing on, on what his hands are, you know, flexed out or whatever else. And I just want to focus on heels in the dirt, uh, chest in line, you know, with his knees to make that, that, that nice triangle here. And you know, making sure that those aiming points and everything like that are good to go, okay? And then once we get comfortable with that, we're gonna drop that hand down. And like somebody said before, I'd like to have that hand right down like with your nose. And what a kid will do is have it out a little bit. What I don't want, and this is maybe, you know, a little bit too nitpicky, but I want it to be a little slightly uncomfortable where his lat, his lat muscle on that side is slightly stretched and flexed. It gives you a, bit, a better coil and a, and a, a spring. If it's completely uh, limp, then this arm and everything that the power that you're going to generate is also, you know. So if I'm telling this guy to take an open step and to sprint off the ball this way, I also want him driving, you know, having that quick twitch 
and popping that lat back and throwing that arm back. Well, if his, if his arm is limp, and I can see it's not by the deflection and his, his uh, price up there, uh, you know, that's not going to be as powerful as the other way. Okay, but some, just some points, make sure that you can see this is, I mean, hey, oh, here's, I mean, this is textbook. Having his, you know, weight on his instep, his knee is inside of his toes, inside of his ankle, you get that triangle right there. And even on his up foot, it is, his knee is still inside, his, his toes are slightly outside, so it's a thinner triangle, obviously, but it still is one. Um, his forearm is on his thigh board, and his, his, he's loaded to where he can see the linebacker's feet. That's all I ask about the eye. That you can see the second level feet, because I know that it has your awareness right here for anything left and right. Okay, and, you know, the other thing is making sure that his toes are at least with the instep to the heel. I don't want to be any further back than that. Um, and then the last one that we have is a tackle two point stance. The reason it's different is by the alignment of the defensive end. If you're playing a lot of teams with a loose technique there, then you want to drop it back so his hips are square to the person that he's going to be typically going against, you know. If you're playing a team that's a you know a four eye though, he can bring that foot up to have his hips more square. If that's who you know he's typically blocking in his movements and everything like that. Um, with us, we're about forty percent, thirty five percent pass protection. So we I did at, uh, during last season, you know, tell my tackles that they could be in a two point stance uh, because we were we were struggling against this, you know. Um, and they really liked it. They, you know, really enjoyed it. And the only thing I tell them is you still have to have that feel in the dirt. You can see Tyrone Smith has it. Loaded hands, you know, flexed hands and, you know, his eyes up and everything like that. Um, you know, textbook uh, dance. So this is, you know, my philosophy on the drill work. Um, but I, you know, get in the bunk proper body position. Do not do drills that exemplify technique that you don't have, okay? Uh, you know, there's no point in going through the shoot if everyone's rounding their back and, and high hip with it. You know, it's only putting them stress on their lower back. That's, that's ignorant. Like, get rid of those things. You know, I'm not kidding you guys. My entire indie is, uh, is only pose. I, I change it up. You can see in the bottom of here, I have all this stuff to change it up. So if I want to work on a better arch in my back, I'm telling those guys they got to put their hands behind their back. We do our entire indie with hands behind the back. Or we'll do the same drills in reverse, and we'll go backwards. Or we'll start out of a three-point stance or a two-point stance. Or we'll, or we'll go from being in the fit. Or, you know, the only, really only time I change up is we'll do a board or a cone. And then eventually we will start in the shoot. Um, so they have, they have to emphasize coiling their bodies more, but we won't do full drills in the shoe um, or anything like that. Uh, and we do not do the exact same drills every day. We've got a routine of drills, which I'll get to the next slide, um, that have an emphasis for each day. And I think you got to, it's, it's weak point training and it's not just doing things that you're good at. I think the stuff that you're really good at, you, it's not like you don't need to practice them. I mean, you absolutely have to, but you got to have a focus on the stuff that you're not good at. If the only focus is the stuff that you're good at, then how are you going to get better at the stuff that you're not good at? It takes extra focus. Um, and, I, and then the last thing that you, you should prioritize 80-20. 80% should be your basics and foundation for a week. And then 20% needs to be game plan specific because there are certain weeks where we're asking our guys to do stuff that they're not totally accustomed to. It's a small portion of what they do, whether it be, hey, you know, this week's going to be more of an emphasis on the run game or pass game or sweep or, uh, you know, power read or whatever else we're running. Okay. And here's a week of our indie. We start off every indie period the same way, our session of indie, our guys have that same routine and then we do that for pregame you know for the game our pregame is the same way so our guys are always engaged and dialed in um on the same mindset you know kind of like Pavlov's dog uh and then you know Tuesday is our run blocking day 
and for our pass set, um, you know, in the second half of the practice, when we have that, the foundation of pass set, and, and basically the big thing is twist pickup. I, I want to work a movement drills like that every day. Um, you know, Wednesday is another, it's more of second level. It's, it's, it's focused on our feet firing um, versus creating and generating power, um, it, it, you know, and working that and, and more of a fit kind of thing. Um, and, and, and not so much of a drive in our, you know, it's kind of like Tuesdays are, you know, drive block and Wednesdays are base block. And then Thursday is our, you know, where we're doing yoga and, and really a light day because it's, you know, we're in only shells on that day. And we're trying to just get guys ready, you know, with the game specific stuff and all the mental things that it takes, uh, you know, going into the game. Okay. So uh, just to kind of go over my terminology before we get into, you know, the drive block versus the, the base block. But these are the steps. That, that we have, we've got a pop step, which is pick it up, put it down, a lead, a lead step is, you know, you're going forward. It's what we say is six inch step forward. Um, I just call it a lead because, I, you know, you're going forward. I don't care if it's, you know, at a 45 degree angle going forward or if it's at, you know, directly, it's you're going forward, it's a lead. Um, we've got an open step, which is with our back foot, that we're opening our hips up. A drop step, which is with our up foot, which we're dropping that foot back. It, you know, these two are paired. Uh, these two are paired. A lateral step, which is with our off foot in our stance, and that's directly to the side. Okay. And then a post is um, the same thing, except with our up foot. And then you have a skip, which is, you know, where we're crossing feet. And that's why we say a skip pole. And then here's all of our, our blocks which are, you know, the same that, um, you know, um, we all have, uh, you know, everywhere, <laughs> you know, and that same Amy points past that, you know, it's, you, everybody's got a different name for it, but the big two that we're working on is, you know, just the base and a, and a drive, okay. Um, and, you know, going from there, but, a, you know, a, Driving a base is really what we're getting at today. The idea of a drive block is I want to drive the defender. Okay. So if I'm going to move somebody, you cannot go down the middle of somebody if you're trying to move. I, I just told you guys, you know, what happens in any Oklahoma drill uh, where two guys go down the middle of each other. It's a stalemate in terms of somebody throwing somebody else off the board, the coach resetting the drill and you go in again and the same thing happens. And then he goes, okay, nobody won. Moving on to the next one. Um, you know, that is no good. That's why you can't create movement because if 77 and 68 go head to head, they weigh the exact same, they're about the exact same strength, it's going to be a stalemate science, okay? where if I told 77 to pick 68's half and drive him, and just drive that six, he's gonna get movement. So that's why I say a drive block. You're picking a half of the player and cannot let him cross your nose. So he can get into the backfield, he can go right down the line of scrimmage, or you can get, you know, that kind of movement. A base block is, you know, where I'm not asking him to get movement, okay? I'm asking him not to get behind you. So if I told 77 that he's got a block 68, okay, and he can't get behind him, like your mirror drill, he's gonna attack that midline. And I tell him if it's a base block and it's a stalemate, it's okay, it's a good thing, okay? It's a good thing if they stalemate and it's at the line of scrimmage because our running back or whatever else is going on in the backfield is having square shoulders to where that's gonna be okay. All right. Um, you know, and then the other thing, I just want to have this on here. So if you guys want these presentations, you have all of our stuff and our verbiage and everything like that. Um, and again, and another emphasis on it, any point, the near number, the near pack, the near shoulder. Okay. And if it's a base, we're attacking that midline right down the middle of them. So near number, midline. All right. Drive block, near number, getting movement. Base block, down the middle, stalemate, okay? 
And we do get movement on base block because the, re the, the way we get it is right here, is a stalemate and then we torque. And to torque is twisting your body, contorting it to create, you know, this guy to play left and right and then running your feet to stay in front of them. Uh, and a drive block, you don't need to do that because it's again, it's 350 pounds attacking 150 pounds of the other defender, okay? So I'm not asking my guys to do that. I'm not giving them a realistic expectation. I mean, one of my guys, doesn't matter who the other guy is, can move them, all right? We can create movement. So we'll get to some tape for the majority of this stuff so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, 